Well, hello, Blade Gang. I got a special one for you today, and uh, I really do mean that. Uh, this is a very unique blade. You've seen the thumbnail. I'm going to do a little bit of a reveal here, but not keep you too long. It's from the good folks at Maxace. <laughs> And uh, what have we got? It looks like another one of their humongous titanium and M390 folders. And you would be right, except that it doesn't quite open all the way. <laughs> it's stuck at 90 degrees. What is up with that? Well, we have a hand sickle. I'm not going to call it a scythe, but you could call it a scythe. Um, the Shielden makes that nice little scythe designed by Tier 1 and company. And uh, this one is a bit larger than that. You can see that it is hand filling and it is a beauty. In the industrial sort of style that Max Ace is has become known for. Kind of space age industrial. Star Wars-ish, maybe. Looks like a spaceship if it's closed. Well, <clears throat> by the way, this is one of the last videos I'll be doing with this cast on my hand. It comes off later this afternoon with any luck. Uh, that's a story for another day, but um, I'm hoping that uh, you only get to see some faint surgical scars. <laughs> well, there we have the name, Hella. And by the way, so let's... Uh, Let's digress just a little bit. Hella, I was trying to figure out where they pulled up the name that it have to do with hell. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's uh, another Norse god. And it is um, something that is associated with um, fictional characters, Marvel Comics. So... Uh, there we have a picture of what I believe they named the knife after. I could be wrong. That is Hella, and you see the headdress on uh, the uh, the Viking sort of uh, helmet looks a lot like this blade, right? Maybe. <laughs> so uh, if you know your Marvel comics, you're probably more than familiar with the character than I am. I'm also uh, also see another image here from Disney from uh, possibly a movie. You can tell I'm really up on things, you know. <laughs> I'm an old guy that doesn't watch all this stuff necessarily, but hey, that doesn't mean I, I haven't or I don't. Let's get back to this Hella and Take a look at some of the really nice features that uh, Backspacer with the, uh, the milling and the jimping sort of spanning the two sides of the handle. I'm going to show you some compares in a moment as well. And uh, interesting clip. I'm going to close this guy up. If I do things two-handed instead of flipping them around with one for a little bit longer, please uh, forgive me. Uh, I am not known for my uh, in front of camera acrobatics. Uh, the rest of the time I'm doing backflips. No. <laughs> uh, a lot of people do handle knives uh, better than I do, particularly at this moment in time. Um, had my days with the ballet songs and uh, fixed blade knives as I was doing lots of martial arts in uh, years leading up to this one. You can see that you've got a couple methods of opening. You've got this long bar. I don't know if you want to call it a thumb stud or not. I guess we could call it a thumb stud. Looks like it is uh, removable. Yep, yeah, there's a Torx in there. Looks like a bit bigger than a T8. Uh, I don't want to bring the kit out at this time, but you can open it there. As someone asked me with a, another knife in a, a response, uh, you can roll it open. Why didn't you roll it open? Why didn't you reverse flick it? Why didn't I do some somersaults? Because <laughs> it's about the knife. It's not about my ability with the knife necessarily. Here we have this uh, big half moon sort of cutout. And I find 
that makes a beautiful, call it a front flipper if you want. And the action on the knife's a little bit, a um, little bit tight. It's not exactly drop shut. <clears throat> that could be because of where they had to place the detent, which is right about there. And that might be a good thing because it, it's going to keep it from falling on your fingers. So once you get past that point, it does drop. So it's not going to be one of those fidgety knives, although you could certainly turn it into one by becoming a little bit more uh, adept at it. Here is the uh, pocket clip, which is not transferable. It's so complex when you see something like that, you're going to automatically tell yourself, no, it ain't switching to the left side. And it is not deep carry, but has a nice uh, ramp in and a little bit stubbier sort of a ramp on the way out. Uh, there's your other side, so you can see there's no provision made for a... Uh, of reversal of that clip. However, there is a lanyard hole. It's hard to see, but there it is. And with something like this, if you're using it like out in your garden and so forth, um, you know, maybe you want to use a lanyard on it. Might be a good idea. If you were thinking that this is kind of a last ditch uh, self defense tactical weapon, anti personnel sort of a device then um, maybe you don't need that or maybe you feel you do. Uh, speaking of that, well, why don't we measure it up? I'm going to get back to what I was just thinking about in a moment. Um, as far as measuring it up goes, it's going to be interesting because there. We're going to do kind of separate measurements. Overall length doesn't really, I don't think, matter. And I may not throw the uh, specs up on the screen like somebody asked me two years ago and I kept on doing. Um, if I go from here to the end, and pardon me if I don't get the whole thing in the frame, six inches, okay? Six inches. And um, the blade, if we go to the handle, I wonder how do I do this without cutting myself? Don't need a surgeon to do more work on me. Four inches, okay? I'll get it in the frame for you. Four inches to the handle there, but five inches if we go to the back of it. There's lots of places you could set your measurements. Um, blade thickness, that might be important. It is a pretty thick stock. So in inches, 0.18. In millimeters, 4.8 millimeters, it ain't thin. It is a robust, as we say, knife. And the handle, fairly thin, 0.56 for the size of the knife. And don't you love that blue cast? Oh, well. <laughs> I had my pickup color. I like blue. Here we go in ounces, 6.7 ounces. So not exactly a featherweight, but considering what you're working with in that large industrial mass of titanium and steel, um, pretty good, pretty good. It ain't 10 ounces, it ain't a half a pound. Well, no, it is a half pound. <laughs> no, it isn't a half pound, that would be eight ounces, man, it's really. Uh, so here's the feature I was going to show you. There is a pack complete set of hardware they give you as if you're going to wear this thing out, but maybe you could with uh, pivots and uh, pins and uh, screws and a hardened steel insert to last you a lifetime. But here's something else that it comes with. And yes, I need two hands for this. We got that screw. Could be a titanium screw. Is it a titanium screw? Hmm. Nope, it's steel, which would make sense. Get a little more wearability out of it. So you see, you probably already saw, there's a hole. 
And this will go in from either side because the knife itself is not threaded. The blade and the handle is not threaded. What you need to do is, there we go. Hard to do in front of the camera. Now you've got your fixed blade. You've got your fixed blade scythe or sickle or karambit, by the way. A lot of people laugh at me when I do this, but if you know your karambit techniques, this is uh, point and straightforward, kind of like a Indonesian uh, karambit. I'm not saying this is a karambit, okay, guys? A lot of people have faulted me last time I reversed a sickle and called it a karambit, but uh, why can't you if you've got the technique, right? So this can be held back here. This can be held up here. That's a beautiful thumb swale. You could even kind of cap it over the top. And I may need to change batteries, so stand by. We're back. And yeah, my battery was failing on the camera, so I just plugged in. There was a little jump there. That's what happened. I didn't exactly keep it lined up. As I was saying, lots of ways to hold this for a very proprietary sort of style of knife. Well, let me put that there and bring out another Max Ace. That's the Pterosaur, P-T-E-R, Pterosaur, which I guess was a type of uh, dinosaur. Uh, you may know more about it than me. And this is another one where the design notes very much the same, wouldn't you say? Not the same exact patterns, but same handle. By the way, this is available in two other variants uh, that are DLC'd. Uh, the handle and or the blade is DLC'd in two different uh, locations. I think one is sort of the blade is part black and part uh, satin. By the way, they did a really nice job with the, uh, the brush satin on this kind of coarse, but I like that. And it's not that much of a fingerprint magnet like some satin finishes. But the Pterosaur is a, a kind of a takeoff on a Tonto. Very thick also. Very industrial also. You've probably seen my review on it. If not, it's out there on the channel. And let's pull the Pterosaur out of the way. That's a Max Ace again. And bring this guy out, which was my first sickle sort of a knife. And this is the Bastinelli Grumpy. Grumpy. Check out those serrations on the back side of it. He did some wicked stuff with this. And this is another hand sickle. Set up very interestingly the same. See, we can get them both in the shot there. You see, we've got this on both. We've got Kind of a similar configuration, except we've got that little uh, indent here for your pinky or for your index finger if you're holding it um, point down. Uh, obviously, no clip on this. This guy comes with a sheath, very lightweight, encapsulated tang with uh, micarta. This is like a greenish micarta. Um, black DLC blade on this, uh, M390. And uh, this is made in Maniaggio, Italy, probably by, I would say, Fox. Let's see. Nope, just says Bastinelli, Maniaggio, Italy. Not sure who the OEM is, either Lionsteel or Fox, based on past experience. But um, this was a fairly large knife to carry. And you can see that this is smaller, but not that much smaller. When you look at the size of the blades, right? So here you're able to fold it up in a much smaller package. And before I attempt to close it, realize that it ain't going to close. The lock bar is going to move, get a little wiggle there, but the blade isn't going anywhere because we've got that pin in there. So uh, it's not something that you're going to whip out 
in a moment of need and slide in there so your knife won't fold on your hand, uh, it ain't going to happen because this doesn't come with a sheath. But if I suppose you were going to do some utility sort of EDC work with it, uh, you might want to do that. I think with the knives that come with those pins, it's kind of silly, you know, similar to the ones that come with the rotary block. You need time to engage it. You need a little extra time. So uh, if you had time and you knew you had to use it, you know, fine. Um, a quick compare to some standard fare here, in a sense. The uh, Rat One from Ontario. See if we can get them both in the pick. Rat One's still, you know, pretty long knife. This is just, if you could straighten this one out, it would be longer, I believe. But um, Rat One kind of holds its own size-wise. Well, this could be something that you are interested in, the uh, Max Ace Hella, if for the collection only, like me. I'm not planning on sporting it around, but uh, I will carry it on occasion. It is a cool knife, and I think it's something really out there that Max Ace uh, was, I think, brave enough to do. The Max Ace Hella, check it out. Don't forget to give this review a like and subscribe. I'll be back soon.